When you think of any animation studio, you would think of today's popular studios like DreamWorks, Pixar, or Blue Sky. However, I bet the first one that automatically came out of your head was the one and only Walt Disney Animation Studios. And not just because you looked at the title. For over 70 years, this studio released many of today's most legendary animated films of all time. Today, I'll talk about all the films that they have made, the struggle that Disney had to go through to make the films, the studio's history, and many more. It's going to be interesting, funny, surprising, and you might learn a few things on your favorite movies. I want you guys to keep in mind that I made this during the summer and fall of 2009, so I won't be talking about The Princess and the Frog or any other films released after that. And now, we invite you to relax, let us pull up a chair, as Animation Look Back proudly presents... Walt Disney Animation Studios. Now let's start from Walt's beginnings. Walt Disney and his brother, Roy O. Disney, were only making animated shorts under the name Laughograms during the 20s in Kansas City. Then, they moved to Hollywood making the Disney Brothers Studio with two different series that were mildly successful. Alice's Comedies, which were based on the books of Alice's Wonderland, and Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. In 1928, Walt lost most of his animators because he refused to reduce production budgets of Oswald that was offered by Charles B. Mintz. After Walt lost Oswald, he needed to create a new character to replace the rabbit, and thus, Mickey Mouse was born. When Walt released the first animated short of sound in 1928 called Steamboat Willie, the mouse became a phenomenon, more famous than any other cartoons at the time like Felix the Cat, and Disney went on competition against Max Fletcher, who created Betty Boop and Popeye. In 1934, after that Walt was big with his Silly Symphony series and creating other Disney characters like Donald Duck and Goofy, he decided to make something that no one has ever seen before. Make a full-length animated feature film. This was Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, the first ever animated feature film. It's the story about a girl named Snow White who lived with and took care of seven dwarfs, but her evil stepmother, the Queen, poisoned her with an apple. But then, her Prince Charming came in to give her a kiss and lived happily ever after. Walt Disney got the idea when he was 15 from watching a silent film version at the Kansas City Conventional Hall on February 1917. It had a budget of more than $1.4 million and it took three years to make it. The memorable songs like Hi Ho, Hi Ho, Hi Ho, Whistle While You Work, Just Whistle While You Work, and Someday My Prince Will Come. belonged to the music company Bornco, and it still does today, because the studio didn't have its own music publishing company at the time. During production, everybody around Walt, including his brother Roy and his wife Lillian, were telling him that nobody, and I mean NOBODY, would sit and watch more than 10 minutes of a cartoon, let alone 90. But later on, Walt would prove them that they were wrong. On the opening premiere of December 21st, 1937, the film earned a standing ovation, and it got $8 million during its release. Past celebrities like Charlie Chaplin and Sergei Eisenstein call it one of the greatest American classics. It earned a special honorary Academy Award that had one normal-sized statue and seven little statues, given by Shirley Temple for Walt Disney as a significant screen innovation which has charmed millions and pioneered a great new entertainment field. Two years later, Walt tried to put his experiences he learned from Snow White into use on his second film, Pinocchio, based on the book by Carlo Collodi. It's about a wooden puppet brought to life by a blue fairy who goes into mischief and mayhem to prove that he can be a real boy. In the original plans, Pinocchio was supposed to be like a wise guy who was mostly sarcastic, similar to the original book. In other words, 
Pinocchio was supposed to be a douchebag. Walt had to bring everything to a halt after six months of production. The problem was Pinocchio wasn't a strong enough character to carry the film. How did they solve it? A better supporting cast. Now here's where Jiminy Cricket comes in. Originally looked like an actual cricket, now he's like a dude with no ears. He would become one of Disney's greatest supporting characters. The opening song he sang, When You Wish Upon a Star, would become Disney's official anthem, and possibly, in my opinion, the greatest Disney song of all time. Later on, Jiminy would star on TV shows, educational shows, and would play an important role on the Square Enix video game, Kingdom Hearts. Another mentionable character is Gideon, you know, that hobo cat that follows Honest John around during the entire film. He was originally supposed to talk and would have been voiced by Mel Blanc. Yeah, that's right. The same guy who voiced everybody on the Looney Tunes would actually do something for Disney. Anyways, they decided to make him mute, but whimsical. Kinda like Dopey from Snow White. Today, all of the recorded lines by Mel are all deleted. Well, except for some hiccups that they kept for the film. Alright, let's just go back to Pinocchio before I get too carried away here. On its release, it became a major box office success in the US. The rest, however, was delayed because of World War II and its aftermath. It won an Oscar for When You Wish Upon a Star, and many film historians felt that it's the most technically PERFECT Disney film of all time. Going back to 1938, the popularity of Mickey Mouse was going down. Walt wasn't prepared to let his favorite creation be forgotten. So, he decided to make a special silly symphony called The Sorcerer's Apprentice, based on Goethe's belated poem, De Zauberering. Originally, it was supposed to be Dopey as The Apprentice, but Disney quickly switched it to Mickey. Conductor Leopold Stakowski offered Walt to conduct The Sorcerer's Apprentice at no charge. The short got better attention to detail, and Mickey Mouse got a new makeover by animator Fred Moore. One day, Stokowski suggested to Walt to expand The Sorcerer's Apprentice into a concert film with several animated segments set to music. And that is when Fantasia was born. Some of the other segments are Tokota and Fugu in D minor, where it starts out as an orchestral live-action sequence and then... I really don't know. Then there's the Nutcracker Suite. It describes this changing of the seasons, from summer to winter to be precise, with fairies, dancing mushrooms, fishies, flowers, and leaves. Then there's the Rite of Spring that tells the theory of evolution from the Earth's beginnings to the extinction of the dinosaurs. Then it's the Pastoral Symphony that features ancient Greek mythical creatures and gods. It was controversial for the partial nudity and racial characters. After that is the Dance of the Hours that features ostriches, hippos, and alligators. Yeah, this could be the weirdest segment out of the entire film. Trust me on that. Then it's Night on Bald Mountain where an apocalyptic hell comes out one night. Then it got stopped by the sounds of church bells. Actor Bela Lugosi was hired once to do some poses for Cherubog. You know, that giant black demon in the segment. But animator Bill Titla didn't like it, so Lugosi got replaced. It can be easily said that this could be like the creepiest segment of the entire film. And finally, it's the Ave Maria. The best way to describe this segment is that this is one of the most beautiful moments I've ever seen made by Disney. Also, the film featured Fantasound a special machine where different sounds of music would come out of several speakers that were placed in different sections of the theater. In short, Fantasia was the first ever film to be in surround sound. It won two special Academy Awards, one for Walt and one for Stokowski. Jerry Bruckenheimer will make a film based on the segment The Sorcerer's Apprentice called... Well, yeah, The Sorcerer's Apprentice. Even though today it's considered a classic, there's something that Walt couldn't avoid. He lost a buttload of money on it.